All right, guys, so let's all start making our way back to our seats. Let's make sure we fill these things. Dang, there is a good amount of you guys today. You know what's so funny? It was like raining outside. It's about to be 4th of July weekend. And every time, I swear, every time I'm like, yeah, you know, it'll be a few, like, we'll have like our leaders kind of break down prayer before things start. And I'm like, yeah, it seems like not a lot of people will come. And you guys just decided like, yeah, today's the day. We got to come to youth. And it's so funny how, how things just work that way. Um, and so obviously we just got out of our summer bash worship time. How many of you guys enjoyed the summer bash? That definitely won't be the last time. Like Nicole said, we try to do something once a month, right? And so this month, we want to do the guys and girls night. Why? Because last time, it was awesome before COVID happened. Like, it was amazing. Like, us, us guys, we felt like a brotherhood. We felt like we needed to go outside and start chopping trees down or something. You know, girls were like, your chat was like fire, and you guys talked day and night. And I know... Now it's kind of dead, but, you know, it's time to revitalize those things. It's time to revive those things. It's, a, it's an exciting moment to hang out with uh, brothers and sisters and have guys and girls night. Word on the street is, like Nicole said, girls want to do face masks, maybe a little bit of Lizzie McGuire, like not a lot, just like a little bit, like the first 10 minutes, and then, you know, I don't know. It's going to be cool. Listen, we can have fun, too. And so without further ado, I am speaking today. I know it's been a while. I know I've been, you know, allowing for awesome worship leaders to come up and speak. And today is the day where I'm like, okay, it's time to come back. And this is my first sermon as an engaged man, right? So the message is going to be a little different, you know? It's going to, no, it's, it's going to be exactly the same. It's like worse now. I just get progressively worse. So really quick, how many of you guys know the story of Joseph? Okay, so we're just going to talk about Jacob this week. No, we're still going to talk about Joseph. It's fine. I'm excited to speak on him um, because oftentimes when I read the story of Joseph, um, I read it from this like particular lens. Like I read it always the same way. I think the same way. And then recently I reread it and I was like, man, I started looking at it from a different lens and I was like, this kind of hits a little bit different, right? Like I was like, I never saw it like that. And uh, a big part of that is just every time I've been reading and I, I encourage you guys to do the same, whenever you read the Bible, put yourself in the shoes of every single character in that story, both good and bad. Because I think we have oftentimes have a problem where we love to put our feet only in the shoes of the hero and the victim and the good guy. But sometimes we're a little bad ourselves, right? Like, sometimes we are the mean one in the story. We're the one doing it wrong. But needless to say, wherever you stand in a story, it's just always great to look at it from every lens. And so I'm going to talk, again, through the story of Joseph. It's a chapter, if you're following me, it's Genesis chapter 37. We're not going to be reading every single verse verbatim. I'm going to be giving you the kind of George version on a lot of parts and read some verses. And you're going to follow me. Can we turn up the lights in the back a little bit? I feel like it's a little dim. I feel like you, I'm, it's putting you guys to sleep. Is this better? Is this a little better? Not, yeah. This ain't sleep time, all right? It's time to hear the word of God, all right? Gosh, dang it. You guys ever watch Napoleon Dynamite? That's like one of the best movies of all time. One of the best. Napoleon's brother, he's like, gosh, Napoleon. Like, and he puts, he's, it's the best. Go watch it. It's not that bad. It's awesome. And so, I'm going to pray for us one more time, and then we're going to get right into it. You guys excited for the word tonight? Okay, that was good. I respect that one. I respect that one. I won't make you do it again. So let's pray. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Uh, Lord God, I just thank you um, for every single person who showed up today, God. And I thank you that you have a very important special word uh, just for them. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are moving in our midst, that you are already doing cool things in hearts. And God, I just pray, Father, that um, you would just use me today to speak your message, not mine. Lord, I, I, I just pray. I need you, God. I need you, um, and I can't do this without you, Lord. Your word is the one that changes people, not mine, and uh, I'm not special, but there's something powerful about saying yes to you, God, and so, Lord, I thank you that you're going to do something awesome, and in Jesus' name, I pray, and we all say amen, amen. amen. So, we're going to read the story of Jason, uh, Joseph, Joseph, <laughs> it's a new character, Joseph, <laughs> it's in the book after Genesis, um, we're going to read the book of Joseph, so, this is how the story starts off. Do you guys know who Jacob, Jacob and Esau are? Okay, so Joseph was Jacob's son, right? 
And Jacob went and had like 12, 13 sons around there, right? And Joseph was his favorite son. It's a problem right there, favoritism. You're going to see what favoritism does in families real quick. But Joseph was his favorite son <clears throat> to the point where he gave him this rainbow-colored tunic, right? So it was this, you know, back in the day, they would rock these robes, right? And it was all rainbow-colored, and he preferred Joseph to the point where the Bible says, and we can read it here in verse 4 of chapter 37 if we want to put it up there. Yes. It says, his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, and so they hated him and could not speak to him on friendly terms, right? So right off the back, we see animosity, we see jealousy, because Papa has, you know, preference over one of the sons, right? Then what happens? Joseph, he's known to be a dreamer, all this stuff, he has a dream, right? Yeah, he has this dream where there's these, there, his, him and his brothers are going outside and they're getting wheat and they're getting all of this stuff. And his brother's wheat would bow to his wheat. Very weird dream. Imagine wheat tied up walking like that and just bowing to other wheat, right? And, but his brothers understood this. And they're like, what are you talking about? You're saying that one day we're going to bow to you or something? Or one day we're going to honor you? Or one day we're, we're going to put you above us? Like, what, what are you talking about? They're like, get out of our face, right? Then Joseph has another dream, right? In verse 9, it says, now he, sti now he had still, do we have it up there? Cool. Um, now he had still another dream, and it related to his brothers. He said, lo, I have had still another dream, and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. He re uh, related it to his father and to his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have had? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow ourselves down before you to the ground? His brothers were what of him? Jealous. His brothers were what? Jealous. Jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. Why? Jacob was a prophet. He, his story is crazy. How he wrestled with, with an angel or God. It's not clear how he went through all these crazy things. Story for another day. His father's ark, we'll, we'll say it is, right? And so his brothers are now through with him. He's done. They're like, all right, this kid, he's walling. And back then, they were a lot more real than us, right? Like, we get annoyed at our little brother, little sister, whatever, and we want to strangle them, right? How many of you guys have younger siblings that sometimes you just want to strangle, right? Don't look behind you if your sibling's looking at you, because they're probably giving you a look right now. That's everyone. Even if you have an older sibling, sometimes you want to strangle them. And they did too. Only they really meant it back then. They were like, no, I'm actually going to strangle this person, right? It's, it's crazy. And so Joseph's brothers go out, and, and Jacob, uh, Joseph's dad, says, go out with them. And when Joseph goes out to meet with his brothers, his brothers say this in verse uh, 19. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Now then, come and let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits, and we will say a wild beast devoured him. Then let us see what will become of his dreams. That's crazy, right? Do you guys get basically what they just said? Basically said, he's going to come out here, we're going to kill him, and then we're going to say like a lion or something ate him and bring him back to his dad. Like they were serious. They weren't joking around. They were about that life. And it's crazy to me that I'm like, dang, you guys really were gonna just going to kill your brother? Just wild, right? So what happens? As we skip through, the brother comes. I'm pretty sure they ruffle him up. They pull off his robe. They throw him into a pit, and they leave him there, right? The only reason they don't kill, them, kill him is that um, Judah, one of the brothers, said, hey, guys, let's not get our hands bloodied, like, let's figure something out. Like, maybe we'll go here later, and Dad will rescue him, and things will be fine, right? What happens? A caravan comes by, and they go, you know what? Let's not kill him. Let's just let's sell him. Let's sell him to slavery, right? The next best thing. You don't kill someone, sell them to slavery? Like, they were harsh. And so they go, and they sell him to slavery, and he goes all the way to Egypt. And what do they do? Does anyone want to guess what they do after they sell him to slavery? I'll give you guys a chance if you want to answer. I want to drink water. After they sell him, yep. What do they do with his, what they, I mean, they kind of said it, what they would do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not fake. They went out there. They, they, they slayed a little animal, 
They put blood on, the, on his colored tunic, ripped it up, and they brought it back to dad and said, dad, he got eaten by a beast. He's dead. Crazy. In verse 35, it says, then all his sons and his daughters arose to comfort him. This is um, their dad they're talking about. But Jacob, he refused to be comforted. And he said, surely I will go down to Sheol in mourning for my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, Pharaoh's official, uh, sorry, officer, the captain of the bodyguard. Right? So basically his dad's saying, I'm going to die crying for my son. I'm going to die weeping for my son. Like they, he just died from an animal and he doesn't know what happened. Let's go to my first point. And because a, a lot of what we're going to talk about is going to surround this. And we're going to break this up in three parts. We're not doing Joseph's whole story in one shot. Breaking it up in three. Right? And part one ends in very novella-ish. Very less. <laughs> it ends really soap opera-ish. And we're going to do that intentionally. Right? But if we could put point number one. No, point number one. That's point number two. Close your eyes. No, that's not it. That's point number three. You're spoiling everything. <laughs> Guys, close your eyes. Close your eyes, please. Please. There we go. We can read it together. Not everyone wants to see you achieve your dreams. <laughs> isn't that crazy? <laughs> Is that, isn't that crazy? Like, not everyone wants to see you achieve your dreams. Now, I'm going to do my best not to make this very TED talky, right? I don't want this to sound, I hate when sermons sound TED talky. Like, you got to believe in you and God is like, like, no, there is no God in TED talks. It's just like, you're your own strength source. It's like, bro, no, God is my strength, right? And, and here's the reality, right? And when I was seeing it from a different perspective and a different lens, oftentimes I see Joseph as the kind of, like, I was like, maybe he was annoying. Maybe he was, like, bothering his brothers. I mean, he's practically telling his brothers they're going to bow to him and all this stuff. And maybe that's why they threw him. But for once in my life, I saw it from the perspective of imagine being Joseph. And you're here sharing what literally God, right? And we're going to see from this story how this stuff comes into fruition. But what God was telling him, God was showing him um, what he was going to do, what God was going to go through him. And you're met with jealousy. You're met with envy. You're met with people coming against you. And one of the realities that I kind of like saw, and I've also seen other speakers speak on it, this idea of, man, you got to be careful who you share your dreams with. You, you got to be careful who you share your dreams with. Because not everybody is going to be excited to hear what you have to say. You know what we're really good at? <laughs> Can I really talk to you today? Can I really talk to you guys today? I don't know. I don't sound convinced. Can I really talk to you guys today? Okay, okay. We love to celebrate people when they're at the mountaintop because we want them to remember us. But we have a problem walking with people through their hard seasons. Walking with people in their seasons where they're struggling, when they're weeping, when they're hurting. You guys are hyping me up too much, <laughs> right? And that's a big problem. And we're gonna see that in this story. But man, us Christians, we gotta, I always talk to us first because we gotta do better first, right? Like, people, the world looks out to us when things are going hard and bad. They know how to find church. They know how to find Christians in a heartbeat. Because they know that your God is real. They know that that God is good. But man, I, it's wild to me how oftentimes it's, again, Joseph, he shares it with the wrong people. And they were his brothers. And what was he done? He was beaten up, tunic taken out, basically told the father that he was left for dead and was sell, uh, sold to slavery. And I find that in myself, in my own self, right, and I don't know if you guys can relate to this. A lot of you guys are young. Maybe you're walking through these things. But man, there were certain things that I wanted to do. And don't get me wrong. I love where God has me now because God will have his way no matter what. And I need you guys to know that. Regardless of who comes against you, and I don't want to skip ahead, regardless of who says what about you, God will have his way in your life if you let him. And there was a lot of things that I did want to do, but I was told, no, oh, you can't do that. Oh, no, that's, that, you would have to do this, this, and this to get there. You would have to do that to get there. You would have to, and I'll be like, you know what? Maybe they're right. And listen, I want to be clear. We do need people who love on us. We do need people who tell us the truth and love. But there is a fine line between pessimism and being realistic. 
I'm going to flip it the other way around because I think it sounds better. There's a fine line between someone being realistic with you and someone being pessimistic with you. And just because they can't see themselves ever doing what God has put inside of you doesn't mean that you just stop doing it. Just because they've been in the same place for seven, eight, nine, ten years and they're really good at saying what everyone else is doing wrong doesn't mean you can't do what God's called you to do. Because you can get there in Jesus' name. We serve a God who makes the impossible things possible. This is what his word says. Through man, nothing's possible. But through Christ, everything is possible. And I imagine, and this is going to be a little leader tip, right? Like, what if we lived in a world where we encouraged people and the big dreams that God placed inside of them, right? Like, what if instead of, let's just change the story a bit. Joseph comes to his brothers, and the first dream about we, I'd probably be like, dude, shut up. Go, go back to sleep. Like, you're, you're walling. You're, I don't know what you're dreaming about. But maybe the second dream about the stars and the sun, then what if he was met with, dang, that's crazy. Like, you think God wants to do that, like, in your life? You think God wants to put you in that position? Dude, well, if he does it, you win. We all win, right? Like, we're, we're all good. I wonder if the story would have been different, Right? Or what the story would have looked like. I'm sure God would have still had his way. Joseph would have still found himself the same way he does at the end of the story. He would have used different circumstances, right? Because just because we do something or don't do something doesn't mean God can't still have his way in our life. But a quick leader tip is, man, even for myself, when I like talk with you guys or pour into you guys or we have, I know a lot of you who've talked to me about being interested in being volunteers and leader. Our goal is to make you better than we ever were. Our goal is so that you guys surpass us and go for way further than we ever could um, go. We can't spend our times, guys, as Christians, being jealous of who's succeeding in life and where we're at. You might have friends that you see, and they're getting the things, and they're getting the things, and maybe instead of, it, of, of talking like, oh, they only got that because of this, and they only did that because of that, and if they hadn't done this and that, why can't we just be like, dude, I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you, man. I, I'm Listen, I got your back forever, bro. Why is this so hard for us? I think it's because oftentimes we end up like the brothers and we spend too much time being envious and jealous of other people. And we can just be real. I think we've all dealt with that, right? We've all dealt with that feeling. You see someone, same age, same place in life, and they're married with like 70 kids and a house, and you're like, how? Like, you're like, how? That like, like... Oh, you got married, your parents paid for all that? Oh, cool, cool. I am a little bitter, but like, I wish I had that, but you know what? God, bless me like that. Give me, you know. Why can't we be more encouraging as Christians? What does the Bible say? They will know us by our what? Know us by our what? By our love. How we love people, how we care for people. And so this kind of leads to my second point, and I want to... Talk Romans 12, 10, because I think it's the same verse. No, it's not. That's John. But what's the second point we have up there? Second point. So we got to stop staying quiet and encourage people with love. Man, we have to stop being quiet and start encouraging one another with love. I think my favorite thing to do is to look out for the person who's like a greeter or the person that gets walked by all the time because the reality is sometimes in church, everyone just looks at the preacher, everyone just looks at the worship leader, but no one looks at the greeter in the front or the person who's doing things behind the scene or someone who's doing a camera. Can I tell you something? Earlier this week, I had a bin. I, I, have, I don't know how many people do this. Maybe it's a lost art. I pray you guys do not lose it in the next generation. How many of you guys like writing letters to people? Okay, so, okay, so half and half, okay. How many of you guys like receiving letters from people? Yeah. Okay, we got to switch that up, guys. I saw that, that was, that was not proportionate, that receiving and giving. That's the next sermon series. It's better to give than receive. Come on, somebody. No, but, <laughs> but here's the reality. So I have this little bin, and I keep a bunch of letters, and I've had it since, like, 2014 um, when I came out of a really, really um, scary sickness, I'll say. And I had all these people send me this get well soon kind of letters and, and f met so many awesome people. And even till now, I'll keep letters that I get. And the other day, I was cleaning my room. And I went through these letters, and I read them. And I was going through each and every one of them. And man, they all hit me really hard. 
Because there's something powerful about when someone sees something in you that you can't even see in yourself. Encouragement is so, so powerful. And I want to say that one more time because I feel like we might have missed that. There's something powerful about when someone sees something good in you that you can't even see in yourself. And being able to read those things, I was like, man, these people really view me like this? I don't feel that way. But I trust that person. I love that person. They're a brother that I can actually trust and lean on. Like, and it lifted my spirit, right? And man, as Christians, like I said, we, we got to do that a little bit more often. Because you don't know who might need to hear a word of encouragement today. You don't know some, what someone might be going through, what someone might be walking through. And they might, not, they might need to just hear, hey, man, you're doing so awesome today. Or, man, I, I, love your, I love your sneakers. Hey, I love your dress. Like, whatever it is, like, you don't know how that can shift someone's entire mood, entire day. I think we have to be careful because we struggle with that balance of encouragement. We're either self-destructive or we're always trying to deconstruct other people's success. What does that mean? It's either... We see God doing something cool in someone, and we're like, man, why not me? Like, I must, I must, you know, not be as good or spiritual or awesome as them. Or, like I said, we take the other route where we're like, yeah, but that person's like this. That person's like that. It's like, man, we got to find the balance. Like I said before, John 13, 34 through 35, if we can put that up real quick. It says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you that you also love one another. And we have 35 there. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Right? I wrote here before I go back into the story and I get to like the ending part of Genesis. And maybe you can write this down. Encourage before discouraging someone. Celebrate before becoming envious of someone. Honor someone before gossiping on someone. I said it before, we got to have a team mentality in church and as Christians. Like, if you win, I win. If you lose, I lose. We got to have the we mentality because this world is making everything about just you. Can I speak to you real, real quick? This world will make everything just about you. You don't need these people. You don't need these friends. You can do things on your own. You can do this. You can do that. Self-love, self, everything's self. And don't get me wrong. There's, there's a place for self-love and, and caring for things for sure. There's something powerful about loving yourself and then learning to love one and lo learning to love others. Yes, I get it. But man, I think some of us are so st stuck in self that we're never, ever going to move on to loving people because that's all we know how to do. And so I want to go to like the final part of Genesis 39 of his story. If we go to Genesis chapter 9, if we have it up there, if not, I can just read it. Cool. And we're just going to read this kind of final part before we get close. Don't die now, Olivia. <laughs> um, I'm going to read this final part, and then we're going to go back into a little bit of worship and have games. Are you guys all right with that? You cool with that? Okay, so it says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an Egyptian of Pharaoh. The captain of the bodyguard um, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, so he became a successful man, and he was in uh, the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and how the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his land. So Joseph found favor in his sight and because his personal servant, uh, sorry, and became his personal servant. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he owned he put in his charge. It came about that from the time he made him overseer in the house and over all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house on account of Joseph. Thus the Lord's blessing was upon all that he owned in the house and in the field. So he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge. And with him there, he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Can we put up point three? Point three. Uh, that's like, yes, cool, awesome. So no one can stop what God wants to do through you but you. 
No one can stop what God wants to do through you but you, right? And I said it before a little bit earlier when we were together and we were doing worship. I, I, talked, I touched on it in Isaiah 54, 17, which we can put up there. And it basically says that, again, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yes, it does. <laughs> if it didn't, I would have been like, turn it off. <laughs> but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. See, what I love is that Joseph gets ruffled up. His dad is told that he dies. Tunic, favorite tunic taken from him, sold to slavery, slavery goes here, yet still gets noticed by one of the, the, the captains of the guard who had money. Like, dude was probably crazy baller if he was a captain of the guard, right? And he saw that everything Joseph touched was turning to gold, that the favor of the Lord was with him anywhere that he went. And so he said, bro, Take, just take care of my whole house. Like, you can just watch it, oversee it, do what you want. I just want you here because when you're here, everything else gets better. There is something powerful about you walking in that yes to Jesus. People will gravitate to you. I, I say this all the time. It's funny, like, if you're that Christian friend, like, your friends always know how to find you when things are going left or right because they know that there's something different about you. They know, they're like, no, nah, that, that person, that girl, that guy, that they're, they're so different. I, I need to go and talk to them because I know they're close to God. I know whatever they touch, God will bless. And it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me because I love the way that no matter how his, and we're going to see this throughout the story, right? We're going to stop in this part. I'm going to give you one more to leave it off on a cliffhanger. But Joseph's story, this happens a lot. It's a little roller coastery, kind of like our lives, right? There's ups, there's downs. There's ups, there's downs. But yet we see God's goodness throughout the entire story. That no matter what man tried to do to him, no matter what anyone tried to do to him, God's goodness and his faithfulness preserves him throughout the story. And so I'm going to read one last part for you. You guys ready for the juicy part? I don't know. You guys don't, you guys don't sound like you. You, you guys... All right, let's be mature adults, okay? This is Bible. Can we be mature adults today? You better not hear any giggles. You better not hear any giggles. You guys ready for this? No, nah, I don't think you guys are ready. Maybe we should just do it next week, right? Should we just do it, should just do it next week? You want to do it this week? Oh, all right. I mean, I, okay. All right. All right. Dang. Okay. So we're going to read this part. We're going to read this part. We're going to be mature adults about it. You can giggle a little bit. You guys ready? <clears throat> And we're going to leave it off here. It says, now in uh, verse 7, verse 7 of chapter 39. No, no, no. No. 39 verse 6. 6, yes. Cool. So it says, so he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge, and with him there he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. He came about after these events that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph, and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, behold with me here, my master, my boss, does not concern himself with anything in the house, and he has put me... Um, Excuse me. And he has put all that he owns in my charge. There is no one greater in this house than I. And he has withheld nothing from me except you because you were his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against who? Against who? Like that mentality, right? As she spoke to Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her uh, to, her, to lie beside her or be with her. Now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the household was there inside. Life lesson. Guys, never be home alone with a girl, ever. <laughs> Girls, never be home alone with a guy, ever. Snell bueno, not good. All right, take lessons from my bro Joseph. So the verse 12 says, she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and went outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled outside, she called to the men of her household and said to them, See, he has brought a, a, in a Hebrew to us to make a sport of us. He came in to lie with me, and I screamed. 
Then he heard that I raised my voice and screamed. He left his garment beside me and fled and went outside. So she left his garment beside her until his master came home. Then she spoke with him these words. The Hebrew slave whom you brought to us came in to make a sport of me. And as I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. And that's where we're going to leave off. And we're going to start again next week. <laughs> Just in case no one understood what happened, homegirl was shooting her shot day after day after day after day after day. And she had a whole man who was captain of the guard. And she kept shooting her shot. And my boy Joseph was like, no, no, no. Guys, find yourself a boy like that, right? Don't find yourself a girl like that. But find, listen, he's like, no, no, no. To the point where she s grabs his garment, says, lie with me. And he runs butt naked outside. He's, he jets. He's gone. He's, what was it, the, the Takashi meme with the AK-47 running like that? And then the, her man comes back home and she says, he tried to forcibly sleep with me. And I screamed and he ran out of here. So that's where we're leaving off. Come next week for episode two uh, of Joseph. Yeah, we can give a round of applause for that to Joseph. And so we're going to rise. And if uh, worship team, if you could come up. Minus one person, because we do have a little special thing that we're going to be doing. Peter, you mind moving this for me? Thank you so much, Peter. Uh, yeah, that way. Let me get a round of applause to Peter. Such a strong man of God. Look at that. Masculine. Modern day Joseph. No. <laughs> all right, we could, we could all rise. We could all stand for a second. Okay. So here's the takeaways, just in case if you forgot, right? Let's, let's, let's wind down a little bit. Let's just pay attention a little bit because we're going to do something real quick with somebody. Um, so real quick. Three points if we forgot. Can we put them up here? Point one, just in case if we forgot. Point one, not everyone wants to see you achieve your dreams. Be careful who you call brother and sister. I'm not saying have your walls up all the time. Don't trust anybody. Be, no, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is know that not everyone is going to applaud you to chase after the things God's placed inside of you. And that's all right. Still love on them with the love of Christ. Still love on them with the love of Christ, but if you know God's called you to do it, trust me, he's going to bring you there. He's going to bring the right people on who are going to champion you on. And listen, I'm not saying that if you have some weird off-the-wall goal that I wouldn't approve, no, that's not it. I'm saying, listen, if you, wanna, if you feel like God's called you to be you know, a doctor, an actor, an actress, no matter how crazy, even the president of the United States, like, listen, I'm all game with you. <laughs> Let's figure out how we get you there. Point two, if we could put it up here, stop staying quiet and encourage people with love. You know what it feels like to tell somebody something you're excited about and hear them shut you down. You guys know that feeling? There's something you're excited to tell someone about and they just shoot you down? Don't be that, don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Don't be that guy. <laughs> be the one who hypes someone up, man. I know I've needed it in my life where I've been hyped about things and I said, man, I'm so excited to do this. I want to do this. And it's like, no, you can't because of this, this, and this. No, be that person and say, you can because Christ is on your side. I need a point three up there. and No one can stop what God wants to do through you but you. You can definitely stop what God wants to do through you by saying no to him. He's a gentleman. You say, no, God, it's too much. It's too this, it's too that. He's not going to force you into it. He's like, okay. Man, can I tell you something? If you psych yourself out of it, if you don't chase after it, guess what? Someone else will. Someone else will. God might call someone else or someone else just might give God their yes. And I don't say that to scare you, but what I do say that is, my, man, your yes to God, there ain't nothing that's too impossible for him. And so I want to pray for us and after I pray, real quick, I, I want to celebrate one of our leaders who's going to be. I'll save that for a second. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes real quick.
<clears throat> Lord God, I thank you for your message today. I thank you that you're not just this ultra super serious God, but you're fun and you're exciting and you bring joy and you bring peace and you bring freedom and you bring laughter into a room. Lord, I think about that message that Olivia Avina preached a, a while back where she said, it's like sitting at the table with the Lord and what kind of things can we do when we sit at the table? We can laugh, we can joke around, we can cry, we can talk about life. Lord, I thank you that we can have that relationship with you, God. And, and I just pray that we would continue to break religion in, the, in this youth group and in this region, God, and around the people that we are, this lie that we have to have these super professional, our Father of the heavens, and like prayers like, no, God, I thank you that you didn't die on the cross for that. You died on the cross so we could have open relationship, communication with with you God that we can cry out to you that we can talk to you about our days that we can ask you to intervene with moments we can be angry about things we can be upset about things and you want to hear it all God because that's all you've desired from us from day one it's relationship communication God and so God I thank you um, for part one of the Joseph series and we're excited for part two and Lord I just pray that your spirit would continue to move as it always does. And in Jesus' name I pray. And we all say amen. All right, so real quick, guys, I'm going to ask Christina to come down real quick. Yeah. It's all good. So as some of you might know, if not, then you'll know now. Um, for a while, uh, Christina and I have been talking in the background since, I want to say even like, what, last year? Yeah, like literally forever um, about this uh, potential move to North Carolina, right? To Delaware. 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 Del yeah, that Mark and Olivia, uh, they're still in my heart and head. Everyone's moving to North Carolina. No, <laughs> Delaware, sorry. Um, we had this talk about her family and potentially moving to Delaware. We were just praying that it didn't happen in Jesus' name, that she would just stay. Because it's so crazy. It's like the very time where you figured out, like, oh, we're going to be moving. All of a sudden, she just becomes this ultra firecracker doing all these crazy things. I'm like, who are you right now? Like, just evolving. Like, um, yeah. And then, obviously, sadly, I think it was last week, right? Well, she shared the news that this is going to be her last final day in youth, and she's moving. Um, it's very, very bittersweet, but even connecting it a little bit to what we speak, what we spoke about today, as bittersweet as it is and sad, it's like I choose and want to be excited for what God's going to do through you out there. Because we believe that, man, we weren't all called to just be coddled up and be all Jesus lovers and all this. We were called to go out to the world and make what? Disciples. We were called to go out into the world and make disciples. And so I believe anybody who comes in here is going to be fed to a point where they go out and make a difference in this world. And wherever that is, whether it's there or God willing, you come back next week and we just scratch all of this. Um, but it's going to be an awesome thing. And so I want you guys to give her a huge, huge shout. <laughs> We want to thank her for all that she's done from literally Conversation Matters to, you know, What's the Tea and all those things and, and worship leading and all those things. So we want to pray for her one last time before she, um, you know, does her thing. Um, and so if you could extend your hands wherever you're at uh, and let's put a hand here and we're just going to pray for you. Uh, Lord God, I thank you for Christina. God, I thank you for all that you've done through her for all this time that we've gotten to have her for these last uh, year and a half too, um, from knowing to now. And God, I, I thank you, God, that wherever she goes, Lord, she's gonna touch lives. God, I pray that whatever church that lands, uh, that she lands in, God, that, that people would just grab onto her and latch onto her because they'd be like, there's something different about this girl. God, I pray that revival would follow Christina. God, that she could bring what she found here to another place. God, that she would turn around things and break religious chains and, and, and shift things around in a good way. Lord God, I thank you for how you've gifted Christina. 
from her ability to worship to her ability to have like these MD spots and these, these uh, uh, like even speaking and preaching. And God, I thank you that you've gifted her in so many ways, but I know, Lord, that there's still more to come. God, I know that you are going to unlock more things in her. And so, Lord, I, I just pray over Christina and her family, and I pray that you would protect them on their way there, God. That, you're, you're, that you would cover them, Lord. Cover them, Lord. Protect them from any evil that might want to stop, um, stop them or stop what God wants to do through her. And, Lord, just as we said, and we said it numerous times, although weapons might form, although we know the enemy is out like a lion looking to kill, steal, and destroy, Lord, we know that our God is greater and the God that's inside of Christina, it, it's, it's so awesome and it's so evident. And so, Lord, as we kind of say this final prayer for her, Lord, I pray that you would remind her that you are her peace. Lord, remind Christina that you are her peace. In you, you have what you need. And so, Lord, I thank you, God, that Christina is complete in you. And I thank you, God, that she's going to lead so many, so many to this fire, so many to this revival that we know that she has on the inside of her. And so, Lord, I thank you. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. And we all say amen, amen. Let's lift up one more. So with that said, we're going to do one last song. So can you guys make your way up? We're going to dance, sing, and...